What's up my friends, this is Coach John here at CrossFit Liberate. Got another at home workout for you. Today is Friday, July 17th, and this one's called Floor It. So this is an interval workout. We've got five intervals. Each interval begins on the five, so we'll go at zero, five, 10, 15, and 20 on that clock. And each interval is designed to take you four minutes or less of work time so that you earn one minute of rest before we go into that next interval. So three different movements today, so three stations. And then with whatever time is left after you finish that work, you'll be resting. Your score today is gonna be your slowest round across all five intervals, which really is gonna reward consistency. All right, getting into our warm up for Floor It. We'll start off with one minute each of line hops. Then we'll go into side planks hitting 30 seconds on each side. Then we'll go into some single leg glute bridges, 30 seconds on each side. And then we'll drop down to 30 second intervals for line hops, then glute bridges with both legs, Next is a front plank. And finally, glute bridge walkouts. Getting those feet as far away from the hips as we can and walking them back. And for our mobility work today, we'll hit one minute of a straddle stretch. And then one minute of an up dog stretch to really open up the front side of that body heading into all of our sit-ups today. All right, taking a close look at Floor It. Today we're going every five minutes for five rounds, starting with a 150 foot bear crawl, 35 sit-ups, and 20 odd object deadlifts. So you'll complete the three listed stations for time in this five round interval workout. You'll rest with whatever time remains in each five minute window. Rounds begin on the zero, five, 10, 15, and 20. Your score is the slowest of the five rounds. To get the right stimulus, each round should take less than four minutes to complete. This gives you at least one minute of rest before starting the next round. Four minute rounds work out to an average of one minute, 20 seconds per station. So on the bear crawls today, this isn't a movement that we do very often, but it pairs well with our sit-ups and lunges, as it will also challenge the midline, shoulders, and legs. If you want a beefed up version of the bear crawl, complete a 25 to 50 foot handstand walk or the dumbbell bear crawl. For our sit-ups, let's choose a number that you can complete in just over one minute. And then on the deadlifts, this should be a weight that's on the lighter side of moderate and something that you're capable of lifting for 30 plus reps when fresh. Within the workout, this should be a load that you can complete in one to two sets. And as always, further movement subs and modifications are in the video description below. So our focus on our movements today, starting with the deadlift, is gonna be hip position. A proper hip position in the deadlift is relative based on the size of each athlete. However, the main things we're looking for is that the hips are placed in a position that allows for the shoulders to be slightly in front of the object, the weight to stay centered over the middle of the foot, and a neutral back position. When the hips are too low, it tends to lead to a rough path around the knees. When the hips are too high, it's tough to get a solid drive with the legs, which means that the back can take over the workload. Look to find that sweet spot when starting each set and cycling these reps. On our sit-ups, thicken about the hip position. Although the sit-up is a fairly simple bodyweight movement, a good setup position allows us to get the most out of this station. Pinning the hips to the floor in the sit-up will allow for full flexion extension of the abdominals. Even as you're moving fast today, prioritize a solid position with your hips here. And then on the bear crawl, let's think about that setup position. So we don't do this movement very often, so we'll look to dial in our setup position to start. In the bear crawl plank position, we're looking for a flat back, the hands directly underneath the shoulders, and the knees at 90 degrees. The hips are down, so the back is flat, like a table. When the hips rise too high, it pulls a lot of our body weight in the shoulders, which will negatively affect the sit-ups. Keeping the hips lower allows for a better push with the lower body, keeping this movement. We'll hold this tight setup position in the movement prep to get a better feel for where we want to be. To move forward, all you have to do is move the opposite hand and opposite foot forward at the same time. It can be helpful to start out with slow walks, then progressing to a faster crawl as you get more comfortable. Just like in the setup position, look to maintain a flat back. 
keeping a quiet back by pretending like you're balancing a glass of water on it. This limits side to side movement, which means you're using the core to stabilize. All right, so some strategy for floor it. Anytime we've got intervals and we've got some built-in rest, we definitely wanna be moving with some purpose when it is our turn to work. Now, that doesn't mean that you need to go totally balls to the wall here. We are rewarding consistency with our scoring since our score is our slowest round. So you're gonna to wanna to think about a consistent effort across those five rounds. Think about what you would do for your slowest round and try to maintain that speed across the workout. Maybe even choose rounds one or two to be your slowest by just how you approach that pace and then try to improve your speed from there. Usually that strategy pays off really well with interval workouts. All right, y'all, make sure you get after this workout with some intensity. As always with CrossFit, we wanna bring some intensity to our work. Make sure you're tracking your scores as well. We always wanna be showing some progress over time. And then if you're planning on coming back to the gym, can't wait to see you in person.